be the top ten. That one, that last one he did. Oh yeah, his. You know, I don't know if he's ever done a bad monologue. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's he's. I, that's 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 one of my that's my not not last but one of the things on my bucket list that I that I really have to do is SNL. SNL. You know, I, it's not even just about the mon- monologue. Cool, I got that. But like, I want to just do the funniest sketches you've seen. You know, a guy that doesn't get the credit that I think he deserves, and obviously, and and this is uh, we know what transpired outside of comedy is Bill Cosby. Yeah. And you don't have the you had a couple of run-ins with him. Well, you have it with everybody. Hold on, hold on. I didn't have no run-in with Bill. That was Hannibal. Don't don't. I, but I, well, he ain't had no run-in with him neither. Nobody had a run-in with Bill Cosby. None of us. None of us had no run. I think Gerard is the only one I know who had a conversation with Bill Cosby. Right. Anybody else? No. But he. But we still Cosby. Hannibal. Hannibal had. Hannibal the one that told a joke that got everything seemingly reignited. So they. So, that's what they said. That's what they said. I don't blame like. You can't blame nobody that's a, that, this is the thing about it. So Cosby has been in conversations amongst the comedians in diners. For years. At, after one in the morning, we all eating food. It's literally been heated debate before, before it even came out. Right. Yes. It was just conversations about yeah. it. Yeah. And so like, it's very interesting. Like, I think Cosby is one of the greatest stand up comics of all time. I do believe that. But he's not on my list. Right. I feel bad that I didn't put Sinbad on there. Oh, that's a tough one. See, that's why I don't like doing top five, man. Why, why do you think some of the older comics have a problem with some of the younger comics? Oh, man, I could break that down. So, you know what's funny about me, Shannon? I'm in between both right. classes of comics. So, like, you know, my big brothers are Sid and D-Ray and all, all those guys. Right. And then my little brothers are Gerard and Hannibal and, and all those guys. Mm-hmm. And over the years, I've had to have heated arguments with some of my OGs about them. Like what they was just outright hating on some of them. Like, man, they the white people only like them and they only get the deals because they I'm like, fam, no, they work really hard. See, a lot of y'all got y'all money and bought cars and mm-hmm. jewelry and all this other stuff. That brother brought final draft and learned how to write a script. Right. This brother's, you know, I talk, I brag about Gerard all the time. I recently saw somebody say this, and, and I love my big brother, Corey Holcomb. I love him to death, Chicago OG, but he be saying crazy shit that doesn't make sense. Recently, he said something about Gerard. Now, this is so crazy. I just saw him, and we embraced but he was being a little hesitant. I was like, but he didn't know I didn't see the Gerard thing first. Right. He called Gerard an industry plan, right? Because he said he had a sitcom, and he hosted a war. Just because you ain't got something, that don't mean everybody a plan. And that's my point. You call, I, you know, I got a little upset about it because I'm like, well, I've seen Gerard. I did Carmichael's show with Gerard. Mm-hmm. Every single night, take that script home. After he leaves the writer's room with the writers, he took it home personally. Stayed up to about 5, 6 in the morning. Had to meet us all on set at 7.30 to rehearse it. That's work ethic. You know yes. how people have success like that? Because they, they really put the work in. You're absolutely right. They fucking put the work in. And I know a lot of cats, yeah, I n- know you're not putting in that type of work. I love you to death, but you're not. And it's easy to say, hey, this person did it this easy route and did all this other shit because you don't know they work ethic. Right. You can't talk about you do you write and do all this shit. It's and it's it's funny because I'm watching it from this older generation. And they all everybody's like, yeah, you know, I was offered this movie, but then they wanted me. Which movie was it? So I can see what the f- like, stop this shit. Because mm-hmm. some of us just worked our ass off. Right. Like, I was, even just hearing Kat hear all the things he's been through and why he didn't do this or go here and do this. Yeah, because you and Kat had some back and forth. Y'all cool now? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but it's, it's okay. It's okay, though. It's okay. We don't have to be. Right. Because his success is his success, right. and my success is my success. What started it? Well, this is the thing about it. That Wanda Smith interview. Yeah. The one, the part nobody talks about is, for no reason, Cat brings up me, Gerard, and Hannibal Burris. For no reason at all. Okay. I don't even know, remember what the fucking question was. He just literally like, you, ain't, you can't, <laughs> yeah, they're going to make you a style, little real, but you ugly. Yeah. So what the fuck I got to do with this? <laughs> so you, you was in there with... That's, yeah, that's the beginning of the interview. He, that's what made Wanda kind of start fucking with him. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, 
the whole Wanda back and forth for him is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Oh yeah. And you know, and Wanda wasn't always nice to all of us. No. To be quite honest with right. you. So it was kind of, it was very interesting that all this transpired. It, it was interesting. Especially to see those two. It's, it's the craziest happenstance of all right. time. But that's what it was. Cat, I don't know what even what that meant. He said, they're going to make you the star, Lil Real, but you're ugly. He said, Lil Real, Gerard Carmichael, Hannibal, can't walk the mall in Atlanta. I forgot the mall. Uh, Lennox. Lennox. And no woman would talk to them. And... I, to this day, man, I swear to God, I, I ain't trying to start no shit. I just don't understand. I, look, I don't think I'm the finest nigga in the world. Right. But a short nigga with a perm. Man, you know he's going to see this and respond. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like it, if we were both two regular niggas in a month. Right. And he has the perm and right. the mustache. Right. And I walk in like this with my regular shit. Who the fuck you think women gonna talk to? I don't know, Rail. I don't know. I ain't did it. I ain't did it. I just said. So that, that's the that's the only irritating thing about that for me. Like other than that, it's like cat, brother. If I'm an ugly nigga, thank God, because that's why nothing happened to me. Ain't nobody approached me. Right. Ain't nobody asked me to do shit. I guess I'm an ugly, talented nigga. Right. And I'm okay with it. Man, it's real. <laughs> God. Real, why you come up here upset the car? You know, I, I didn't do anything. You asked about it, and I'm just saying, like, and I and look, all comics, I, you know, y'all, all of us, like, man, we, everybody's like, come on, man, you gonna go? But Cat did say that shit. It was just we. I just, I just, even when him talking about Jonathan Mays, it's like, how, who do Cat Williams think he look like? Like you're not an attractive person. You look God, fucking that, weird. Real, real. He does. How about you? Have you talked to Cat? People when, dress like this nigga as Halloween, like him, not the character. Yeah. They don't when, dress as money. They the, dress as Cat Wim. When the last time you saw Cat? <laughs> That's a crazy story, right? So it was at the Emmys a couple years ago. So this is when we into it. Like we, this yeah, is happening. Yeah, y'all, can y'all go, y'all. We did the videos, it's happening. Mm -hmm. I just presented an award at the Emmys. I go backstage, right? And Chappelle don't know me and this dude beefing. Right. Chappelle sees me. Oh, Laurel, oh, Cat Williams, Cat. You know Laurel, Laurel, you know Cat. Now we just staring at each other. Oh, sh. Dave is like, what the fuck wrong with you two niggas, right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, <laughs> y'all just look at each other. Ain't nobody say nothing. And I'm balling my fist up like you, you. You ever see the author meme? Yeah, I'm standing there. <laughs> we ain't saying shit to each other, and he's holding his Emmy. He has his Emmy in his hand. <laughs> that was the last time I saw. Nothing happened. He just walked away. Y'all didn't say, "Hey, what's up, bro?" Say, it wasn't, nigga. I was, cause I was still fuming at that time. It was like, yo, are we about to like, what the fuck about to happen back here? Cause it's. God, I'm a real. Yeah, I'm a Chicago nigga too. So it's yeah. like, I mean, we about to do this. <laughs> oh my goodness. We about to turn the Emmys into the Source Awards. <laughs> you once said that you believe Cat was jealous of you. You still feel that way? Nah, I was just talking shit. I don't think he's jealous of me. I I, I do think he's jealous of Kevin Hart and I, and it's so weird because he don't have to be like, brother, you are so fucking successful. Mm -hmm. Like you're one of the most successful stand up comedians we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. You didn't have the hype machine. Honestly, he's the benefit of bootleg DVDs. You remember? They, 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 yeah. Every I this in Chicago. I've been being in Chicago at the mm -hmm. time. Everybody had that Cat Williams special. In their house. Right. And because, you know, bootleg helped comedy at that time. Right. Because those people go buy tickets to see you. Right. Absolutely. The bootleg man really was your damn, he was your promoter. Yes. They watch you at the crib and you were selling all your shows and, and Cat benefited from that, man. Right. And I think, I think he's not even just stand up, man, like anytime you see him on screen. Oh yeah. He just won an Emmy for Atlanta, right? He won that shit for Atlanta. He fucking, every time you seen him on wife and kids, like he was fucking great on there. Yeah. He was like, you see him on, like even the school dance movie, we know that's not a good movie. Right. But only thing you watch is that clip. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yep. fucking brilliant. Mm -hmm. And so like, and I'm, look, let me say this. I was just, I'm talking shit. We roast each other. We comics. That's right. what it is. I don't give a fuck. Whatever you say about me at this, I don't give a fuck. Rat's ass. Uh, but at the same time, I do, I, I really do wish that we could, I'm not trying to sound like some old, let's get alone shit, but like, God damn, there's no reason why we can't do another Harlem Nights 
with all this great fucking talent. Or like not even the Harlem Night, but just a movie yeah. that features everybody. Right. You know what I mean? Harlem Nights were great. Man, like Nick tried to do it with school dance, but like let's find something with like a really good script. Right. Some really dope shit and like fucking get all these powerhouses on fucking screen together. Like I'm sick of this shit. Right. It doesn't make fucking sense. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.